Hi, welcome to this video about projective sampling, which is a new technique we developed to optimize geometry in Mitsuba 3. My name is Nicolas Roussel, and I'm a co-author and maintainer of the Mitsuba renderer. This video is part of a series in which we cover some of the tutorials you'll find on our website. I'd highly recommend you watch our previous videos and also have a look at the other tutorials, as we won't have time to reintroduce their content in this video. Today, we'll be talking about the projective sampling integrators and how they can help us solve optimization tasks which contain visibility discontinuities. In this tutorial, we will optimize a shape such that its shadows match some reference target. In fact, we will do this only by observing the shadows. This problem is particularly difficult as it requires the renderer to handle gradient tracking across visibility changes. We commonly refer to these as visibility discontinuities. There are now quite a few different methods to handle these. In Mitsuba 3, we have an implementation of our new paper, Projective Sampling for Differentiable Rendering of Geometry. On the project's website, you'll find a recorded video talk which explains the mathematics of the problem and how we solve it. If you're interested in those details, then we certainly recommend that you take a look. The current video you're watching is about how to use this method in practice. Let's get started. Like every tutorial, we start by importing Mitsuba and setting a variant. Here, we'll need to use a variant that supports automatic differentiation. Previous videos should hopefully have covered the many different ways in which you can build a scene in Mitsuba. So for this tutorial, we provide you with a scene description that already contains everything you need. Let's quickly render it to see what we're dealing with. In the middle, we have a B-spline curve object that is wrapped on itself to create a loop. This is the shape that we will be optimizing. You can learn more about it in its dedicated section in the plugin documentation. But in short, it is internally described by a set of control points and we will manipulate these during our optimization. On each side, we can see the shadow that it casts on the gray wall due to two small area lights that are out of frame. As I mentioned earlier, we will be trying to optimize our curve by only observing its shadows. To do that, we will create a new sensor. The one we had previously was really only helpful for us to see the scene in its entirety. In Mitsuba, there is a batch plugin. It essentially acts as a wrapper around multiple sensors, and when it is used in the render function, it will stitch the outputs of all different viewpoints together horizontally. Here, we've placed two sensors between the curve and the wall, such that the rendered output only captures the shadows. Because of how we've set up the scene, both shadows are exactly the same, and you can see them side by side in the rendered image. The advantages of using a batch sensor are twofold. Firstly, it conveniently allows us to abstract away the number of underlying sensors in a multi-view optimization. Secondly, it has some performance benefits, as the just-in-time compiler only needs to trace the render operation once instead of once per viewpoint. Now, before we go into the optimization loop, we need to briefly talk about forward gradients. Typically, we use Dr. Jit's automatic differentiation features in reverse mode, aka backpropagation, meaning we want gradients to flow from our rendered image to our scene parameters. In forward mode differentiation, we want the opposite. We want to propagate gradients from our scene parameters to the image. It is typically less suitable for optimizations, but it can be very educational since it enables visualizations of the effect of individual scene parameters on the rendered image. We have an entire tutorial on this topic if you wish to learn more. Here, we will use it to check the quality of the gradients that we compute. This is a fairly important step for most inverse rendering tasks, as the quality of the gradients directly influences the final result of the optimization. For example, very noisy gradients are less likely to converge. The optimizer, like Adam, might help you overcome some amount of noise, but that might not be enough. In this snippet of code, we arbitrarily chose to apply a rotation around the horizontal axis to the control points, and render the forward mode gradient using finite differences. This requires a lot of samples and still produces a fairly noisy result. Red in this figure indicates an increase of pixel value and blue a decrease. This output makes sense. For one of the two point of views, the curve becomes more perpendicular to it and hence wider, whereas for the other one, it becomes more parallel and hence thinner. This image will serve as our ground truth. 
Now let's also render the forward mode gradients using the projective sampling integrators and compare it with our previous images. I'll skip the initialization of the integrator here. We will come back to it later in the video. For now, you can just consider it as any other integrator. The visualization code is now slightly different, as we can use the forward mode differentiation capabilities of Dr. JIT to get our gradient images. We can see how closely it matches the ground truth and that it's practically smoother than it whilst using less samples and runtime. We can move on to the main optimization loop. It isn't different from anything you've seen before. We load a reference image, we compute a loss, propagate gradients and take a step with the optimizer. Let me point out again how we don't need an extra loop over the viewpoints because the batch sensor conveniently handles that for us internally. As you can see, during the optimization there seems to be a lot of twists and bends. Fundamentally there are a lot of steps like gradient preconditioning, regularization, some course to fine scheme that could all be applied to improve the convergence of this problem. The final result we get is fairly convincing, but we aren't over yet. I will hand you over to my colleague Z, who will give you more details about the integrators. Hi, I am Z. In the following, we are going to dive deeper into the options and hyperparameters of the projective sampling integrator. Our method splits the derivatives into three disjoint components. The first one is a continuous derivative. It estimates how shading would change a color. On the other hand, the discontinuous component estimates the derivatives resulting from the visibility changes. We further split it into the primary visible part and the indirect part. We have three independent estimators for each component. The three results are simply summed to obtain the final derivative estimation. This gives us the liberty of controlling the quality of the three estimators separately by specifying the number of samples used for each one. In this particular tutorial, since we only see the shadow of the curve, we can safely set the continuous and the primary visible sample count to zero to save some time. The next important configuration is a type of guiding structure. This important data structure accelerates the computation of discontinuous derivatives. It can be set to none, which disables the acceleration, a regular grid, or an adaptive octree, which is a default. Currently, Mitsuba only supports guiding for indirect discontinuous derivatives. The support for primary visible derivatives could be added. To emphasize the importance of guiding, let's try to visualize the forward gradient with and without guiding. A forward gradient is an image that shows a color change in the rendering with respect to a perturbation of the scene, in this case, by slightly rotating the curve. Without guiding, the gradients are so noisy and sparse that successful optimization may become challenging. But with guiding turned on, the gradients are even cleaner than the finite difference reference. Using more projective samples will lead to an even better guiding structure. In practice, we recommend tuning the hyperparameters to find a balanced point between efficiency and correctness. And inspecting the forward derivatives is a key step in that process. The most important takeaway from this tutorial is that gradients could be noisy or even wrong. For neural networks, gradients are analytically computed with a focus on speed, whereas in differential rendering, gradient computation, as complex as the rendering task itself, relies on multicolor estimations, and many specialized algorithms are developed to remove the bias and reduce the variance. Hence, it is really important to first inspect the gradients, pick an algorithm, tune the parameters, and then launch the optimization task. I hope you enjoyed this video. You'll find more details about the projective sampling integrators in the Mitsuba API. See you next time.